Today, I've got a shout out, a shootout, and an ugly tie that you guys on Twitter demanded I buy when I found it at the secondhand store. So, thanks? If you're not watching Clarissa on Make It and Fake It, you really should. Her channel is fantastic. I became a fan of her channel when I saw her make a 3D printed ukulele and then at the vi end of the video, actually play the 3D printed ukulele. Maybe I'm just jealous because I can't play the ukulele, but that was awesome. And I continued to watch her videos as she put them out. They, they seem to always be the sort of projects that I would get an idea for. I would say, man, that would be cool if I would do. I'd start making plans to do it. And then she would already be doing it and releasing a video about it. And so I really enjoyed watching those. So if you would like to see more of the sort of projects that I wish I were working on, you need to go watch Make It and Fake It subscribe to her channel, ring the bell on her channel, because she doesn't produce videos very often and she's taking a bit of a break right now, so you want to be notified the moment that she uploads more. But go through her entire history if you haven't, because each one of her projects is fantastic. She does things like 3D printed piggy banks and a self-playing guitar and a Triforce lamp. And did I mention the 3D printed ukulele? Honestly, she's awesome. You should check her out. A recent project of hers involved taking a retro pie setup and putting it in a lunchbox with a Pico projector so that she could just plug it in and play video games anywhere she is. And the thing is, I've been working on a similar project myself for a little while now. Not exactly the same, but hey, her project was super cool and beat mine getting out the gate, so good on you, Clarissa. Now, in my project though, I realized I was getting to a point where I needed to have a keyboard constantly attached to the RetroPie setup, especially for the sort of games that I wanted to play. And so I needed to find a good keyboard that would work on any Linux system well that I could use, preferably that would be small, easy to store with the unit as it sits on my shelf, but also wireless so that I could use it from my couch without worrying about that. So all really complicated things, but fortunately there are a lot of options for this. And as Clarissa called them, Papa Gearbest was willing to send me a whole bunch of keyboards so that I could compare them head to head and tell you which one is the best one for a Linux-based Raspberry Pi system that you could use from your couch. So let's take a look at these and figure out which one of these is the best. Let's start with the TZQ9. This keyboard I thought came with a dongle just like the rest of them so that you could plug it into your USB port. And sure enough, inside there's room for a dongle, but they don't make it easy to get in there. The back is, is difficult to get off and it goes over the whole thing. And on mine, there was no dongle. This keyboard apparently is Bluetooth only. And after I spent about a half an hour trying to get this keyboard to communicate with my Raspberry Pi 3, which should have Bluetooth, for some reason, they were just not pairing up. So the TZ immediately eliminated. Next, let's take a look at the FN717 wireless keyboard. This keyboard does come with a dongle and it communicates through the USB port, so that's good. It does not have a rechargeable battery port. Instead, it just has two batteries that go in it, which is fine as well. And it's it's a lot larger than some of the other ones. It's a full keyboard. You can actually type on this with your fingers in you know home row position. It's got the up, down, left, right arrow keys in the lower right hand corner, which when I was playing the Game Maker games before I could get them configured with the, the controller to work, 
That was actually really useful to be able to control the games up, down, left, right with these keys down here. It just felt natural to do so, probably because of years of training of having the up, down, left, right over here on the keyboard. And so I really liked this keyboard. However, it had one glaring problem. There's no off button on it. There's no way to tell it to stop draining those two batteries that you put in it, and so it just constantly drains the batteries, near as I can tell. There's there's no way to turn off that function on this, unless you are constantly opening up the back and pulling the batteries out when you're not using this keyboard. Now, overall, it works, but the fact that it does that is kind of knocking it down on this list right from the get-go, but maybe let's see how these other ones fare. Next, let's take a look at the iPaz port, a really fancy, pretty keyboard with ooh, light up in multiple colors on the keyboard. Now, this is perfectly functional. It's got a little battery, rechargeable battery that you just plug in the USB port to charge it in, or you can run it through the USB port, or you can plug in the dongle and run it wirelessly. The functionality on this keyboard is really good. And once I got it configured properly, it had all the keys that I needed in order to run a Linux environment, including the ever important vertical pipe command, which if you use Linux, you understand the importance of. If you're in Windows, you might not get what that's important for. But this keyboard has it, and I was happy to find it on there. And I was able to use this for almost all of my functions. Almost. Now, the one thing that made this keyboard a little bit less desirable was that it's got its up, down, left, right arrow keys up here with an enter key in the middle. That's not bad, but when I tried to use that to play games, using up, down, left, right with my right thumb was not natural for me. And again, this is just years of training because I'm used to up, down, left, right being with my fingers on the arrow keys and up, down, left, right being with my left thumb on the keypad, this one put it on the right and it was difficult for me to get used to. Now maybe kids who have been playing first person shooters for years and are used to using dual sticks might have an easier time doing that. Personally, I've only ever played first person shooters with a mouse. I'm old school, so this might not be as big a problem for you as it is for me. However, and, and fancy light up keyboard, this might be a good choice. And I did find this, the iPad port, perfectly functional. I was super impressed with this keyboard and would recommend, but there might be one that I recommend a little more, so let's take a look at the others. The C120 Air Mouse. I was super excited about this one because not only did it have a keyboard on one side, but it also had an accelerometer in it so that using the mouse function, you just move up and down and, and things like that. It's designed to use for presentations. Uh, you have volume control and up, down, left, right on this side, but then you can pull it over and do some limited keyboard functionality. And I do mean limited. In fact, on this keyboard, it's difficult to even type things in caps because the shift key doesn't capitalize the letters. It instead accesses, you know, secondary uh, uh, functions so that they could save on keys, including the arrow keys. And there is no pipe function. There, it, it's missing some very important functions for Linux. So as much as I was hopeful to be able to maybe play mouse games like this with this, a little bit like the Wii, but not exactly the same, it really just failed on that. Now I'm going to keep this thing around. I am going to be able to use this if I'm ever in a presentation situation, so it will have its function. Another weird thing about it, though, is that the dongle for it has no home on this thing anywhere whatsoever. You don't store the dongle on it, and that seems like a big downside for a extremely portable keyboard. So definitely for Linux, the C120 is out. And for other functions, it's probably functional in limited senses, but I'm not super impressed with this. Lastly, we've got the P9 keyboard, which on the surface looks a lot like the Passport, which I really enjoyed. 
It even has the cool light up function, although its light up function is on or off with red. It doesn't light up the way that the images say, unless, hold on. No, wait, nope, can't change it. Can't figure out how to change it. It might have some functionality. Maybe I should read the manual for it. All right, manual seems to indicate that if we, okay, we do that and then, oh, yeah. Oh, check it out, hold on. There it is, no, nope. yeah, we're in, we're in color change mode. How cool is that? But I found it functional. I found that it worked. I liked the, the, shoulder buttons for the left and right mouse button. I like the mouse on the butt middle, but then what I discovered was it's up, down, left, right is on the left where my thumb expects it to be, which made it easier for playing games. Still a little bit awkward because for a lot of these games, I had to hit the space bar, so I have to hold it like this to do it, but not as awkward as it was with the iPads before. Now this is a buck or two more than the iPads port, and Aside from the fact that the arrow keys are on the other side and the fact that it doesn't get as many pretty colors in it, it doesn't add a lot more functionality than the iPads port. So for me, the choice really comes down to these two. And if you can afford the buck or two difference, I kind of like the P9. The P9 also is unfortunately not named the P9 on GearBest. It is just called a 2.4G wireless uh, keyboard, touchpad, multipad, it's just descriptive. It doesn't have any branding on it other than what is on the box. So it might be harder to find this one. And if you end up having to go with the iPads port, you're not gonna be hurting too bad for it. But for me, it's one of these two keyboards for using on my RetroPie system. Now, as far as the RetroPie system goes, I will be telling you more about that in the future, but I'm still getting that all put together, so expect that in a future video. But while I'm putting that together, I'd like to hear from you. What games do you wanna be able to play on a RetroPie system? What games would you want to have a RetroPie system for? Leave a comment in the description for that. And if you have any, if I have any other thoughts, I will put a comment in the description with a link to my blog. Oh, look at that. A new URL for my blog, easier to remember. So that's super cool. You can get more details there. But until then, I want to thank you very much for watching. Big thanks to my Patreon backers. Your guys' support is more needed now than ever. And I thank you for that. And as always, I want to remind you, safety first. I'll see you next time. Do you want to know more about 3D printing but don't know where to start? Or did you buy a 3D printer but you need some help getting it going? Don't panic. The Beginner's Guide to the 3D Printing Galaxy is here, now, for you. Buy it on Amazon. There it is, no, yeah, we're in, we're in color change mode. How cool is that? Oh, so neat, all the colors. Not just three or four, all the colors. Oh, I love this. This is this is the winner right here. P9, that's the winner for here. Ooh, we're gonna go with that color. That's the winner.